Thanks, Robert. Say, Rachel. I might cry through the whole thing like I cried straight through the first panel. <laughs> How often do you get to say publicly? See, I'm already going. <laughs> Thank you to somebody, to a teacher who taught you what you're going to do with your life. I came to Georgetown in the School of Foreign Service because I thought each one of us probably has some talent. It was clear to me early on that I didn't have one of the top shelf talents. Hmm. Um, but I thought, well, I'm nosy and I have pretty good hearing, so I'll be a spy. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can do with what you've got. And, and, and the talent, I thought, like, was to be talented, to be gifted at something, was to be like Mozart. That was my idea, hmm. that it should just come to you, it should come through hmm. you, and it should be easy. And um, so I came to the School of Foreign Service, was the only place I applied. Um, I was terrified of failure, so I got in early, and that was it. I didn't apply anywhere else but Georgetown. And in fact, I, I should just note that anybody, I told everybody that I was going to be a spy, which maybe should have been a hint. <laughs> but I was 17 and I was certain, because the worst thing to me was to be uncertain. Um, so I came to Georgetown and I, I struggled through my, you know, all required courses the first semester in foreign service and then I had placed out of English um, requirement for the second semester so I was able to just take a fun course so I took playwriting I somehow got into the playwriting course and it, it sh the shock waves every day at this entirely different approach to creating stuff because it wasn't like if you sit down and something brilliant comes out then you're brilliant. If you sit down and it's drag, obviously find find something else to do. Mm -hmm. um, no. What Doc Murphy said was, of course your first draft sucks. It's a cliche. It's the first thing that popped into your mind. Just put it down. You have to get through the first draft because then you'll get to the second draft and the 50th draft and maybe if you're working really, really hard and you're really lucky and really good by the 50th draft. And this is, I, I, tell, I talk at schools and I'll tell them, Doc Murphy said this. And Doc Murphy said, maybe by the 50th draft, if you're really good, you'll have reached mediocrity. <laughs> Which is so good, because in mediocrity, you might be able to find a nugget of something interesting. And that's the nugget you want to mine, because then by the 100th draft, something interesting might have happened. And how, how incredibly freeing is that? I learned that writing is not sit down and have brilliant stuff flow through you, but writing, he talked about playwriting, it's like a, being a wheelwright or a wagonwright. You, you work and you work and the, the joy is in the work. My agent just said to me recently, my book had won a thing, and she said, see, isn't this this is what makes it all worthwhile, right? Because I was struggling to hand in my latest draft. And I said, no, this is nice, this is good, but you know what makes it worthwhile? It's when you get to that sentence that only that character could say, and it's so right. That's what makes it worthwhile. And I learned that, sorry, here we go again. I learned it in playwriting class. And I went on to take as many classes as I could possibly convince people to let me take care. I actually started to transfer to NYU. I transferred to NYU Film School because I thought, I, I can't be a spy, I have to <laughs> do something else. So I thought maybe I'll write and direct plays and I transferred and I got in and um, a week before NYU was about to start, I realized, I, I woke up my mom at one o'clock in the morning and I said, I can't go back. I, ca I can't go to NYU Film School. We'd already found an apartment and everything. I said, I have to go back to Georgetown because otherwise in two weeks at NYU, they're going to put a camera in my hand and say, make something. And I can't yet. I haven't studied Shakespeare. I don't know, I don't know how to write a play. I don't know how to direct because I don't know anything yet. I need to get educated first. And my mother said, holy shit. <laughs> Which I thought was appropriate, and I came back and I figured out a way to make up, I made up my own major, I majored in English and theater, it was an interdisciplinary major, and Doc Murphy was my advisor from the 
theater end, and John Glavin was my uh, advisor from the English department. And I, I lived in fear straight through graduation day that I was going to get there and they were going to say, but uh, you didn't actually major in anything. Because <laughs> I just picked courses that I wanted to take and I made them requirements and almost every semester I had a class where it would just be me and Doc Murphy sitting in a room and he taught me how to be a writer. And I owe every single one of my books to him. Um, because he taught me how to write, and it was all about finding that nugget, and that, he would always say, astonish me, and find the last story. He, um, you'd win a cookie. Um, we'd have a vote in the class of the best writing of that week, and I wanted that cookie, like I never wanted anything, I never won the cookie, but I did win a cookie. <laughs> I did win a couple of those great laughs, which are clearly from a playwright because it's written, ha, 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 the Doc Murphy laugh. And the one time I won an award, the way I found out was Doc Murphy called me on the phone and said, Rachel, do you have a dress? And I said, uh, yes, do you, do you need to borrow it? <laughs> And I said, to what? And he said, to the thing a week from Thursday. And I said, okay, what thing? This is how he told me. He had put me up to win a playwriting award. And it was the first thing that said to me, and I won it, and I had to go to this thing in a dress. <laughs> and, um, but it was the first validation. You, you know what you're doing. And I ended up, my thesis project senior year was actually called Benediction. It was a play about a, a spy named Benedict Arnold, <laughs> which I felt brought me full circle. So thank you. <laughs> Um, so, I have a really, I guess mine's kind of similar to your story. Um, I was in SFS, and uh, I actually, uh, <laughs> ever since high school, I actually would uh, tell my teacher, they actually made fun of me, I was like, I'm going to be a politician, I'm going to be a senator, and I'm going to be the first black president of the United States, you watch and see. And then, you know, 2008 rolled around, and I was like, oh, well, I might find something else to in my life. And so, like, literally, I think around that same time, um, that's when I started acting, but it didn't really take off until someone told me about, you know, the D.B. Murphy one act. And I was like, wait a minute, are we going to write these things? We well, can't write your own lines. And then I, I it, it really kind of opened me up to the possibility that you can create your own world and put that on a stage so other people can experience it with, with you. And um, I think the most powerful thing is when you see your words have life given to them. And that was the first, like, one of the first experiences of me seeing that. I mean, that was, it's out of this world, as every playwright knows, like, that's what you look forward to, whether it's a reading or a full production, just someone giving life to your words and in allowing you to at least open up that part of your world to people in a way that you, you could not do any other way. You can't do it in a book, you can't do it in a movie, you can only do it on stage. And um, that, that allowed me to just, I, I can't tell you how much that experience really kind of started the snowball of, of me, you know, getting into playwriting. It was like literally my senior year. I mean, I thought I was going to go to like to law school, I was going to do this and that. And as soon as that happened, I was like, mm. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to do this over here. That's a good thing. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it was crazy. The first time I ever, you know, it was, it was beautiful. So I just have to say thank you, and yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Miranda. Well, I wrote my first play, Witness, because the Don B. Murphy One X Festival existed. And I'm not sure if I would have written it. Um, as a play, had that opportunity not been there. Um, I came to Georgetown thinking that I would be a poet. And, um, and then I found the theater department, too, and decided that if I were to be a poet, I should, I should have a much better understanding of how to play other people and how to understand that whole spectrum of emotions that humans and it was, it was 
through the friendship that I had with certain seniors who were taking a playwriting class. I was a freshman at the time, and I thought they were so cool. <laughs> and, um, and this sort of free-for-all, just mine your imagination and write something down and send it into this festival sort of attitude that I was sitting in a biology class one day. I was never a very good science student. And um, I started jotting down in the margins of my notes this this story about two hydrangea flowers and um, uh, a girl who was trying to write her dead mother a letter. And pretty soon, that evolved into a play. And I was so surprised <laughs> and so excited. And I sent this in thinking, wow, well, this is awful, but I hope someone else can, I hope I can fake it until it makes someone else like it. And, um, and my friend Sean called me up that summer and said, Miranda, I've decided to produce Witness as this year's Don B. Murphy Lennox Festival. And I said, oh my gosh. And it was one of the most empowering experiences that I have ever had as a writer. I come from a family of journalists and novelists and poets. So it's something that I consider to be part of my lineage and something that I've always seen in my family. So I know what it feels like to be an artist. But it wasn't until I had a real moment and motivation to you know, come home from work that summer and, you know, tell my friends, oh, I can't go out tonight. I, I have to work on this play, you know, it's being produced. <laughs> and, um, and I just, there is such a thrill in being able to revise this piece and to watch it, you know, move into the hands and mouths and lives of actors and directors and a small production team. And I, I think that that has been one of the most amazing experiences of, um, certainly of my Georgetown life, but also of my, of my life as an artist and a writer. And I just, I feel so grateful for that for that first opportunity of just follow what you think that one wild idea is, and we have a place for that at Georgetown. Great. Thank you.